I am Lori Reeves with the Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative, and I'm really happy to be here today to talk with you, um, along with our partners from Healthy Start, Paloma Prada, and um, is anyone else on from Healthy Start? Paloma, I can only see three people's pictures with the slides up, um, but we we um, also Hi, have- Hi, is here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Monia. Um, and we also have a couple of people from FPQC who all of you know quite well from our coaching calls, um, Nicole and uh, Stephanie. And um, in the interest of time, we're just going to get started. Uh, we've put in the box here, please, as we typically do with our uh, meetings, put your name, hospital campus, and your role in the hospital chat. I mean, in the um, meeting chat on the right hand side. And then next slide, please. We're stuck. There we go. Uh, we are recording the webinar. Please make sure you mute yourselves until we get to the Q&A section. And um, at that point, you can either raise your hand or just unmute yourself uh, to ask a question. Either way is fine. And uh, we already mentioned, put your name, job title, and hospital name into the chat. Thank you so much. Next slide. The Florida Perinatal Quality Collaborative's vision and values, we all, we want all of Florida's mothers, infants, and families to have the best health outcomes possible through receiving respectful, equitable, high quality, and evidence-based perinatal care. And of course, that's what our mother-focused care initiative is all about, is helping to identify health-related social needs and assure um, that, that mothers get respectful care. Next slide, please. Mother-focused care is in 67 hospitals around the state of Florida. Here's our map of where they're located. And that uh, constitutes about 64% of the births in the state of Florida. So pretty big impact. Next slide. This is just an overview of our many partners and funders. And without their work, without their support, we couldn't do our work. Next slide, please. So one of the reasons that we're working on mother-focused care is that um, evidence shows that only a part of health outcomes is, is actually changeable at the healthcare level. So you see here on this, uh, on this image, 20% of health impact comes from uh, the healthcare system and the, the remainder of impact on someone's individual health comes from a combination of health behaviors, their physical environment, and um, the socioeconomic factors that they deal with, which are a, a big part of the CMS question requirement on um, risk factors for social determinants of health, which is another component we know all of our hospitals are working on right now. So only 20% specifically attributable to interventions at the healthcare level. So we need to be thinking about what else is going on in someone's life that may impact their health and well-being. Next slide, please. The global aim for mother-focused care is to improve maternal health by transforming the hospital culture and environments so they can respectfully serve all of the mothers and their families and help them meet needs related to social determinants of health. And that again is part of CMS's requirement. And you all know that beginning in January this year, you're required to report not just which which screening measures you implemented, but um, what proportion of people who had a positive screen got referred for services. Next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Paloma Prada from uh, Healthy Start. And Healthy Start has been an incredible partner to the FPQC, um, including especially a part of the Mother Focus Care Initiative and you all should have met your uh, partner from Healthy Start in your community when you came to the kickoff. So Paloma, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to hand off to you. Thank you, Lori. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so in an effort to support the work of FPQC, Healthy Start um, actually was um, tagged with re um, getting all the mother's voice. So we had 31, um, Healthy Start coalitions participate and contract. We made sure we wrote agreements with them on how they were going to actually get moms to respond to our surveys. Um, the surveys, and we'll see it on the next slide, a couple of um, slides ahead, um, some of the questions. Um, but, no, Nicole, can you go back, please? 
Thank you. Um, to the, the surveys were to address health related social needs, including the understanding their challenges faced by women during pregnancy and postpartum. Um, there were audio recordings and they are available um, to enable the hospitals and your teams to hear directly from the mothers what they shared with us. Next slide, please. Okay, so who did we hear? So all the coalitions um, had to um, offer to all of the moms that they contacted, um, mothers had to deliver at the latest within the last six months prior to the survey and the interview. Um, women were recruited from a variety of partners, networks, community organizations, not just from Healthy Start. They were not only Healthy Start participants. Um, Healthy Start coalitions recruited the moms only, but did not do the recordings. We partnered with the University of South Florida and their team to actually do the recordings. And all the information um, was really um, uh, deducted from the interviews that could identify any information on the moms. Um, next slide, please. So here are some examples of the questions on the interviews that moms were asked. So for example, were you connected with resources that you needed? Um, do you feel that you were treated with respect? Why and why not? Um, do you have any suggestions for improvements regarding your care in the hospital or anything else that you would like to mention? So these are some of the questions. The questions took about five to 10 minutes with each mom and um, again, audio recorded and they're available for you. Next slide, please. So we completed a hundred, um, we um, completed 163 um, interviews. Um, they were conducted between June 26th and August 25th. There were um, 85 slots available in June, 405 in July, we were super busy in July, and then 275 in August. Um, 25 were in Spanish, three were in Haitian Creole, both languages were available, and it ranged from four to 36 minutes, each one of them, but most of them were nine to 15 minutes um, average. And then 25 coalitions participate, actually got interviews completed. Um, each one of them had about one to four per, um, uh, moms that actually completed interview. 261 registered between June 27th and August 25th, and we did complete 163. Next slide, please. And I think, Lori, you are going to take over from here. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Paloma. So what, what did we hope to learn and why did we do this? Um, we specifically um, had heard from hospitals when we started the initiative that um, it's very helpful to hear from your constituencies, right? And so in order to have some resources for training purposes, we had hoped that we could get these recordings that hospital teams could listen to and learn from um, most of what we heard from uh, parents was positive, but, um, and and that's a learning uh experience as well, not just what's negative, but what's what's positive. So what we had hoped is that it, it could help hospitals understand what postpartum parents needed, what were their experiences like at the hospital level, and where were their opportunities to improve respectful care. Next slide, please. And we did hear uh, a lot from families about what was helpful to them. In many cases, they said that that it was great that the services they got were very responsive. They got quick follow-up. They got what they needed uh, quickly. They um, felt it was helpful to have items in stock that they they needed, um, that people could listen to their needs and offer them resources that they needed to help support their families, um, including supplies. The availability of supplies was a big positive. Lactation consultant. Um, this was both a positive and a negative in some cases. You know, needing lactation uh, support and it it being very difficult to find it online. So uh, having the hospital be able to make that connection was perceived to be really really helpful. Um, considerations around home and safety and work, uh, places to live, uh, not having money. Um, and then accommodation and being and welcoming for their family members. Next slide, please. So these are some of the quotes we got from the women who did the interviews. And they had some good ideas of things that could be improved. And what we hope is that by hearing their stories in their own words, that it will help your teams understand their perspective 
and um, and and know that many cases the uh, perceptions were more positive than negative, but that didn't mean there weren't still opportunities where things could be a little bit better. Next slide, please. So the hospital teams working on this initiative really can benefit, and we've heard stories from those that have heard them, um, hearing from women about their successes and challenges and their health-related social needs and their overall experiences and their experience with respectful care, and that the voices are recruited so that you get women from, from your community. They won't necessarily be guaranteed that they're from your hospital, but there's someone that are from your community and um, and that hearing those voices can help you understand their perspective and how uh, help you train your staff and how um, to think about better ways to deliver care. Next slide, please. Uh, Paloma, you wanna talk a little bit about the, the connections between the hospitals and their Healthy Start coalitions and how that's shared? Yes, um, so the, the coalitions, um, we're given um, a recording with um, for each of their hospitals to be shared with the hospitals. So they've been reaching out and meeting um, with most of the hospitals to share the recordings, discuss some of the findings, ask any questions. Um, and so um, I think a couple questions are, how can the hospitals use the information to improve care in their hospital and their community um, in Florida? I think some of the ideas have been, even the coalition shared with us, some of the hospitals are using some of the recordings as training. Um, also with the team um, to discuss some of their, you know, think changes that could help, some um, opportunities as Lori mentioned earlier that could be improved. Next slide, please. So I'll do this one, Maloma, thank you. That the. Mm -hmm. We do have some do's and don'ts for the recordings and um, just keeping in mind that these participants gave their time um, to share their personal experiences. And we wanna make sure that you remember um, that we promised them anonymity, that these should only be used for training for respectful maternity care or other hospital-based training, that, um, that we hope that this will help your hospital leadership understand the importance of having patient voices at the table, either within initiatives or on advisory committees for your for your units, and that it can spark a conversation about how your hospital can contribute to improve quality of care in your area, um, making your hospital the place that people want to give birth in your community. What we, what we would say are caveats here is please remember um, not to share these recordings outside of your hospital and that they should not ever be used for marketing purposes. Um, so don't take quotes out of context and use them in other, other settings, please. Anyone have any questions about how to use it before we go into some examples? We got a couple of really special guests today that are gonna share their own hospital experience and how they use these recordings. But does anyone have any questions about how they can be used before we go into those examples? You can either raise your hand or you can unmute if you've got a question. All right, well, let's go on to the examples then. Nicole, you wanna introduce our first presenter? Well, actually, oh, yeah, Lorena. Lorena, hi there, Lorena. Would you like to hop on and just share a little bit about your experience? Lorena is from St. Mary's. She's done some awesome things. Hey, can you hear me? You can. You can hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, sorry. I have to call in from the phone. My my computer's a little temperamental. So um, my name is Lariana Mills. I am the perinatal quality analyst um, at St. Mary's Medical Center. Um, and we had a fantastic opportunity um, to listen to our, our recording. Um, Amanda Stone works for HomeSafe, but she is our um, partner with um, Healthy Start and Healthy Beginnings um, Coalition of Palm Beach County. 
And she actually is the one that reached out to us. So we were super, super fortunate for that. She reached out to both myself and our women's services manager, Shauna Davenport. Um, she provided uh, a Zoom link and we were able to meet with her. She did allow us to listen through um, the transcription um, as well as sending us the transcription after. Um, we are still working towards getting the uh, actual video audio recording. Um, I understand that the, I'm sorry, I'm going to, two seconds. <laughs> Um, I understand that the file is kind of large, so it's kind of hard to get out. So we were trying to work through either using um, a flash drive or she was going to send it in a couple separate emails so that we were able to um, utilize the audio recording. We did get the transcription, which was phenomenal. And ultimately, um, we did necessarily know, she did mention that it was a patient within Palm Beach County, but it wasn't necessarily a patient of our hospital that we knew of. Um, but she did mention, you know, the the ultimate, um, I guess, caveat of the conversation was um, she she was given resources, um, which was amazing. Um, but there was a bit of a language barrier, so she didn't necessarily know what the resources were for. Um, so that was an, that's an opportunity that you know we can utilize for our population, especially to make sure that we're using. Um, the translation services every single time. Um, you guys have any questions? Can you talk a little bit about your team's reaction to hearing the recordings? Well, they haven't, unfortunately. So it was just myself and um, Shauna Davenport, the Women's Services Manager. We weren't, uh, we haven't received the actual recording yet. So that's, we do have the transcription and it's, you know, we're ultimately able to share that. But in all honesty, I feel like um, being at that PAC meeting and hearing from the family, hearing their voice resonated a little bit more. So we were hoping to get that and then share the actual audio um, transcription because I feel like that was a little bit um, a little bit stronger. It kind of like concreted that message a little bit more. Yeah, hearing someone tell their story is powerful in a, in a different kind of way. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and we do have transcription, so we can share that amongst um, staff after um, the audio, but I really, really wanted to share that audio first. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All righty, next up we have Mount Sinai Medical Center. I believe Kylie was supposed to hop on, but there may be somebody else uh, representing Mount Sinai in our place. If not, we can talk through the slides a little bit. All righty, um, Margie Boyer is on this call too, um, who is our wonderful uh, lead for all of our coaching calls. So I hope she can hop in and talk a little bit more. Um, but uh, overall, Kylie said that the listening sessions were very, very well received. Um, hearing the patient's perspective of their experience was humbling and that it is, ex it is important to hear their experience um, because it's not yours or the hospitals. We are there to guide and support them through the narrative of their story. Um, and she said, I think these sessions help mold the way uh, their facility cares for um, the community moving forward. Um, they watched via Zoom, and of course, that wasn't actually looking at the face of the patient. It was uh, looking at the faces of their healthy start reps and hearing the recordings. So um, we wanted to limit the amount of identifying information um, that people would be able to have um, for obvious reasons, um, especially because sensitive information was being shared. Um, and then who attended them? So their entire leadership team, including leader, team leaders, charge nurses, educators, and directors, um, they were offered to other staff, but were too long to have them participate while working. And then she also mentioned that the sessions um, helped them feel more connected to their Healthy Start Coalition, 
course, they already had a great connection with their Healthy Start Coalition, which probably helped. Um, we did survey hospitals and find out that many of them hadn't heard their recordings yet, but also some of them still hadn't made connections with their Healthy Start Coalitions, which is super important and um, hopefully something we can help facilitate. I don't know. Yeah. Any help? I Sorry. Would... Oh, go ahead. No, no. I would just add from our coaching calls, this whole call came about um, when we heard on the coaching calls that many of you, maybe you're on today, um, hadn't heard your recordings yet or had a little confusion about how to access. And then also from Healthy Start perspective, hearing from some of the Healthy Starts, they had a little bit of a challenge connecting as well. So are any of you on? I would really encourage, because obviously Mount Sinai made that great connection in Miami. And then um, Lorena, of course, in Palm Beach made her connection. But I would encourage any of you, because Paloma is here to help us. So we are all here to help you. Is there anyone out there that... Um, had any comments, anything to add? Since we talked about it so much on our coaching calls. We actually have a slide on that, Margie. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you were... <laughs> I just, just took my, would... my, you yeah. just took my sentence. So that's great. So if there's anything that we can do to help, um, you'd be able to get in um, your recordings. Yeah, I would just emphasize you're all here today because you had some curiosity about doing this. Um, and and we feel like this is something that would be valuable for you to do as part of your mother-focused care initiative. We recognize it's not easy. Um, it was really difficult just figuring out how to get these interviews completed, what kind of audio format they should be on, how that audio could be shared with hospitals, how did we do this and also protect the women who shared their stories. Um, it's, so it's not easy. And so we're not here to judge anyone who hasn't done this yet. We, we are learning as we go. Uh, it's the first time we've ever done a project this ambitious with this many individual stories shared. So, you know, we want to hear from you. What would help you? How do we get um, you supported? Yeah, and feel free to unmute. Don't be, I mean, don't be shy because on the coaching calls, you guys, I know you feel comfortable speaking up. Don't worry. We, nobody's judging, as Lori said. Yep. yep. There's a question in the chat from Laura. You want you want to speak up? Yeah, here, I mean, I, I feel like I've sent an email at least once or twice out and I've spoken to HomeSafe over here and I, I still haven't gotten these recordings. I don't know if they've given them to someone else in our hospital or you never got them. And I don't know who to reach out to to get them. I know there's been some turnover, too, and there's different people for the Palm Beach. So I don't know if it got missed somewhere. But Laura, which hospital are you with? Jupiter Medical Center. Okay. Ma? May I respond? Good afternoon, Laura. This is Dolores Haynes. Hi. And if you would please drop your um, information in the chat. Sure. I want to say Jan is on. Um, either myself or Jan will follow up with you today. Great. Thank you. It's already working. Yay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we recognize that we, we invited all the coalitions to come to the kickoff meeting and um, they were real troopers coming and exchanging information, but we get staff changes at both the coalition side and the hospital side. So it's entirely possible that um, people are not contacting the right person. Maybe the right person isn't there anymore. So um, this is wonderful. So does anyone else need help? Ah, uh, Baycare. Baycare. Well, yeah, we have lots on from Baycare, my goodness. All right, so we're get, we have uh, Alexis from Baycare requesting a connection, Paloma. Yes, I'm taking notes. Thank you, and I'm I'm getting your your email also, Alexis. Oh, this is excellent, you guys. Thank you for putting your information in the chat box. Um, so, Mies Countryside, Jupiter, Holly, um, which HCA are you with? Northwest, HCA Northwest, Holly? 
Thank you. Thank you. HCA Northwest. Okay. And then also HCA Florida Capital. Jordan is looking for a connection. Hi, Lori and Margie. It's Elisa from uh, Mace Countryside. Um, if Paloma could just verify my rep, I just want to make sure that I'm emailing the right person. I would really appreciate it. Um, Alyssa, will you put your email on the chat, please? And then Absolutely. I'll reach out. Thank you, Paloma. You're welcome. And then Advent, Heart of Florida, Janelle, we can definitely get you connected. Yeah, as Lori said, it looks like you're new to your role and that might be some of the, we kind of felt like maybe that was some of it too with the turnover leadership at the hospital and maybe some new people with Healthy Start. So that's awesome. Welcome, Janelle. This is fantastic. And then Elise, Elisa at Baycare. Yes, I just put my info yeah. in for Paloma. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Anyone else want to put contact information here that needs a connection? This is, this is fantastic. And this is exactly what we hoped to accomplish today is make sure that you all knew how to connect with your representative and we'll we'll make that happen. Um, Paloma and Monia, thank you so much. <laughs> and to anybody else from Healthy Starts who's joined us today, thank you so much. Um, this is a heavy lift. It's not an easy task to do at the local level. We recognize that it's a different kind of way of sharing information. So, um, you know, let us know how we can help at FPQC. And uh, I know Healthy Start is on board to help as well. Are there are there any additional questions? And Paloma, uh, we will also send you the chat list. So just in case you we or you missed anything in the conversation, we will send that to you. Um, Thank you. Be before we close, does anyone have any additional questions for us? All right. Well, thank you to the hospitals that shared their experiences today. We really are grateful for that and uh, looking forward to getting the rest of you connected so that you can also hear these um, amazing audio recordings and share them with your teams. Thank you everyone that helped make this happen. And please reach out to us if you haven't already, if you need any additional help. Thank you so much.